That was Mike Pompeo in Seoul this week, insisting sanctions relief will not come to North Korea until it completely denuclearizes, a process the Secretary of State says could take as long as two and a half years. Pyongyang staged the destruction of one of its test sites last month, but dismantling its entire nuclear program is another matter. So how can the U.S. verify what North Korea actually has in its arsenal? Let's ask David Albright. He's the founder and president of the Institute for Science and International Security and a former weapons inspector. Mr. Albright, thanks for being here. Oh, good to be here. So uh, uh, let's start out by saying, by uh, giving us the lay of the land. How many weapons, nuclear weapons, do we think uh, North Korea really has? Well, it's a, it's a very difficult estimate to make because we know, know just not that much. I mean, estimates I've made, it's anywhere from 15 to 35 nuclear weapons. Number could actually be higher. Um, if if they have more capability than than we're estimating, so it's a, it's very tough. But they they have you know a couple dozen nuclear weapons. Maybe you know there's a chance it's fewer. But again, it's uncertain. And, and the the problem is is that it's very hard to know where countries make nuclear weapons uh, and where they store them. So w what we fall back to typically is trying to look at their capabilities to make plutonium and weapon-grade uranium, and those facilities tend to be easier to understand and to inspect. All right, and how many of those facilities do we know that they have? Because I know that for a while we knew they had a plutonium uh, site, but we didn't know about their enriched uranium site. That's right. The plutonium program is much better understood. It was a it was a focus of the six party talks in the 2000s, and so right. and, and and earlier, and so a lot's known about that. And we don't think they have a secret reactor, but they do have a secret enrichment plant. We're pretty sure, and we don't know where. Well, Western intelligence has a pretty good idea of where that plant is. They also have another one at Yongbyon, which uh, which they built in secret and revealed in 2010. So, so. I think the working assumption is they have two substantial uranium enrichment plants, one North Korea admits to, one it doesn't, and those plants are going to have to be thoroughly inspected. But, but before that, I mean, what you want in verification is for the country to reveal in an honest way what its nuclear capabilities are, and in this case, including its nuclear weapons production capabilities and its and the size of its nuclear arsenal. Right. So that that is that means that at a first step, what you want from North Korea is essentially a declaration, a list. Here's what we have in terms of our weapons, in terms of our sites for building those weapons, in terms of our sites for enriching uranium and plutonium, and so on and so on and so on. And you would, and you would like that, that the initial list could be almost just like a list, but you would like them to allow visits to those sites so that inspectors can, in a sense, get the lay of the land. And and these inspectors probably should not be the International Atomic Energy Agency. I mean, it probably should be an effort organized by the United States and its and its allies in the, in that region, including China. Uh, well, let me not call them an ally, but at least a, a friend right. and, on this issue. And and that. And that, and then, then North Korea needs to create a narrative of its nuclear weapons program, and that would become a full-blown declaration, which could then be verified by the inspectors. Okay. So, and when you talk about inspectors, you said that it should be an international group, not the the UN, and the U.S. should be should be part of that. But does it have to be inspections that are uh, essentially on demand? That means anywhere we want to look, we can go, and you'll help us look and see what you've got. They, they don't have to be that intrusive. I mean, but North Korea's got to be willing to allow, well, to tell an honest story. I mean, right. in a sense, you know when you see it. Then there's going to be some places, I mean, we have them, lists of, of sites that are suspect nuclear sites. I mean, they're going to have to allow some level of, of visits to places where we just want to check it out. You know, is, is it, were we wrong? Were we right? You know, is it falling off the list because it's closed down? I mean, but, but so there's going to have to be fairly broad access, but it doesn't have to be like in, in the case of Iraq where the inspectors had the absolute right to go anywhere. I mean, it can be less than that and, why, and it can why, work quite well. But why less than that if we know from the past that North Korea has not told the truth? Why shouldn't it be just as intrusive? Because Saddam had lied for years as well, and that's why it was as intrusive. Well, it, uh, what I'm saying is it would be great if it could be that intrusive. North Korea hasn't allowed inspectors to go outside of Yongbyon to this day, except okay. maybe one or two cases where U.S. had a special mission to do and paid a, quite a price to 
to get there. So I think it, you, what you want to do is design a system where it's good enough, but you don't want to demand perfect. Okay. Do we have to insist that they stop enriching uranium and that we basically be able to haul out all of the stockpiles of enriched uranium they have and plutonium and haul it out of the country? They, they certainly have to stop. I mean, that's going to be an issue. I mean, North Korea is going to say, yeah, but we have some needs, civil reactors that we want to fuel. I think the United States has to be very firm. No enrichment at all. It's just, it's just a bad idea, uh, given the history of the whole effort with North Korea. Is they should be shutting down and dismantling their uranium enrichment program, along with their plutonium program and their nuclear weapons program. And, and that's absolutely necessary. It's not about freezing. It's really about getting rid of in, in a verifiable manner. And so it's critical to do that. And, uh, and I would assume that would include the plutonium as well. Now, for sure. Um, they may keep a reactor operational that if somehow if it's making electricity, they may even import reactors, but they wouldn't be enriching uranium for those reactors. Those reactors would be structured or designed in a way that they're what we call very proliferation resistant. Um, and, and, but that, that part of the peaceful nuclear energy program of North Korea has to be negotiated carefully. And really, we're, I, I don't think we're even at that stage yet. Right. Thank, it's, it's fascinating. Thanks for the insight, uh, uh, Mr. Albright. I appreciate it.